Good morning, church. Good morning. Greet your neighbor. Good morning. Good morning. Greet your neighbor next to you. Good morning. Good morning. Greet the next neighbor next to you. Good morning. Good morning. And greet the viewers all over the world. Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Yeah. Viewers all over the world. Good morning and win today in Jesus' mighty name. First of all, I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity, for not consulting where I'm coming from to determine my future. Thank you, Jesus. And also, I want to thank God for the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua, my mentor, who God used to teach me, to counsel me, and to point me to Jesus. And also to thank God for the life of our mommy in the Lord, mommy Evelyn Joshua, for allowing herself to be used by God to point me to my future success. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my name is Chisum. And here I am today in your midst, a product of God's grace. It is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. All boasting is excluded. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, as we go into today's message, give me your heart. I mean, pay attention to God's word with all your heart. Because your heart is the communication point for Jesus. And as you do so, may you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the world we live in today, Many people continue to wander in darkness, not because they don't seek the light of God, but the thoughts of their past continues to hold them bound in darkness. Many people continue to live their life of hate, not because they don't seek the love of God, but their past mistakes continues to hold them captive in hatred. Many continue to live their life in unrighteousness, to live an unrighteous life, not because they don't seek or desire God's righteousness, but the mistakes of their past continues to hold them in unrighteousness. Many seek the mercy of God, but the voice from their past mistakes keeps telling them they cannot receive God's mercy. And this has led many people to continue to live their life in unrighteousness, to live their life in sin, while their hearts dream of the righteousness of God and of the love and mercy of God. People of God, are you in such a position? Are you in such a state Prophet T.B. Joshua says, and I quote, Living right is not about you, how you feel and what you think. It is all about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Tell your neighbor, living right is not about you, how you feel and what you think. It is all about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Jesus made us fit for God. And this will lead us to the title of today's message, Jesus made us fit for God. Tell your neighbor, Jesus made me fit for God. Jesus made us fit for God. And we'll take our Bible reading from the book of Romans 8. Verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. 
we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any past, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing can separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus. That is what the Bible says. But today, opposite has become the case. Today, many of us, we separate ourselves from God's love by dwelling in our past. We separate ourselves from God's presence by focusing on our past mistakes. We are too conditioned into believing that because of our past weaknesses, our past failures, our setbacks in the past, that what God says will happen to others cannot happen to us. What do I mean? I mean, we look at all the mistakes we have made in the past, our shortcomings, and say to ourselves that God's promise of love, God's promise of mercy cannot happen to us. And this has led many of us to continue to live an unrighteous life, to live in darkness while our hearts dream of the light of God. People of God, let me encourage you. We live in a complex and contradictory world where everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's word. In Luke 17, verse 1, Jesus says that in as much as you live in this world, things that cause us to stumble are bound to come. In as much as we live in this world, things that cause us to make mistakes are sure to come. But when we stumble and fall, we can go to Jesus our mediator, and he will forgive us, raise us back on our feet, and make us fit for God. Remember, falling down does not make you a failure, but staying down makes you a failure. Tell your neighbor, falling down, falling down. does not make you a failure, failure. but staying down, staying down makes you a failure. That is why it is said that all men fall but great men get back up. Yes, we live in unsteady times. You look here, unsteadiness everywhere, and mistakes are sure to come. But when we make mistakes as we all do, we don't run from God. We run to God. When you go through the Bible, you will realize that even the great heroes of faith had their own experiences of failure. Abraham, Moses, David, Peter. They all knew what it takes to make mistakes. Yet, the Lord used their mistakes to bring them to a place where he wants them to be, a place of honor. Remember, Abraham failed God when he fled to Egypt during the drought. Moses lost his temper and turned to violence more than once. Are you talking of David? David committed adultery and murder. Peter denied Jesus. Yet, the Lord used these people who failed him. This means no matter how many times you fail, God's love never does. Tell your neighbor, no matter how many times you fail, God's love never does.
Open your lips and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. In, spite of my weakness, in spite of my weakness, in spite of my mistakes, in spite of my, mistakes, spite of my, shortcomings, spite of my shortcomings, help me to learn from them and move closer to you. Remember the title of our message? Jesus made us fit for God. Yes, one thing you must not be confused about is this. Jesus Christ discusses our future. Satan discusses our past. Because that is the only information he has about us. Each time we want to focus on Jesus, Satan is always there to remind us of our unworthy past to provoke our guilt and tarnish our future thereby. But our Lord Jesus Christ does not consult our past to determine our future. When Jesus comes into your life, he puts an end to your past and gives birth to your future. Remember, Jesus came into the life of Moses, a murderer, in Exodus 3, verse 1 to the end and put an end to his past life and gave birth to a great deliverer. Jesus came into the life of Saul, a state prosecutor, in Acts 9, verse 1 to 19, and put an end to his past life and gave birth to Paul, one of the greatest apostles in the history of the church. Remember Zacchaeus. Jesus Christ came into the life of Zacchaeus, a sinful task collector, in Luke 19, verse 1 to 10, and put an end to his past life of sin and brought salvation into his home. People of God, Jesus will come into your life today Amen. and put an end to your past Amen. and give birth to your future. Are you feeling rejected because of what you've done in the past? Come to Jesus. Jesus did not reject the sinful Samaritan woman in John 4, verse 4 to 26, and he will not reject you today. Amen. Are you feeling condemned because of what you have done in the past? I've done this, I've done that. Come to Jesus. Jesus did not condemn the adulterous woman in John 8, verse 3 to 11. And he will not condemn you today. Amen. Are you feeling lost because of where you are coming from? Come to Jesus. For he says in Luke 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, which includes you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, brethren, turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. This is opposed to Paul. He said, one thing I do, forgetting my past and focusing on Jesus. Apostle Paul knew he had been made fit by Jesus. And for him to remain focused on Jesus, he had to forget his past. So therefore, if you are to fit in God's promises in your life, you have to avoid the trap of looking back, unless it is meant to glorify God for what he has done. But the question is, how can you overcome your past? Prophet T.B. Joshua says, and I quote, To overcome your past, you must take God's word to heart and truly make it part of you by meditation. And when you do, you will find yourself called to act with God. I mean, your life will change. Your thinking will change. Your manner of approach to events will change. Everything that has to do with you will change 
to be in line with God and his word. Remember, Jesus spoke the word of God to Satan in Matthew 4, verse 4 to 11. And Satan became paralyzed and perplexed. So therefore, resist this enemy by quoting the living word of God, and he will flee from you. I mean, when Satan reminds you of your past failure, remind him of his future failure. When Satan reminds you of your whole life, remind him that God's word says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things passed away. All things become new. I mean, when Satan reminds you of the condemnation from your past, remind him that God's word says in Romans 8 verse 1, that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when he reminds you of the guilt of your past, and look at where you are coming from, how do you think God will answer your prayer? When he reminds you of the guilt from your past, remind him that God's word says in Isaiah 6 verse 7, that the Lord has touched me, my guilt is taken away. This message is encouraging us to trust in Christ's sacrifice because he alone can set you free from your past. If the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. May God bless his word in the midst of your heart. In Jesus' mighty name.